Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Amir. I'm, uh, Close the door, please. Yeah. I uh, work for uh, Melnox uh, in charge of the performance, the Nick performance. Uh, this is Ronnie. Uh, hi, I'm Ronnie Ephraim, uh, also an uh, architect named Melanox. As you can listen, I will not do the talking today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, what are we going to talk about? Um, we're going to talk about uh, hardware acceleration for uh, XDP. And um, these are uh, the topics. Uh, mainly we want to use uh, acceleration of XDP, not the offload yet. Um, and what we want to do is using metadata prepared by the NIC uh, hardware. Um, it will be vendor agnostic. Uh, so it will have uh, a generic API to uh, the XDP, something like uh, TC. And uh, what we can do with metadata is uh, save uh, save the parsing of the packet and uh, also save the cache miss included in that. And, uh, and for that, we need to add rules to the NIC hardware uh, to either mark the packet or uh, drop it. Uh, yeah. Okay. In uh, Connectix uh, network adapters, we have uh, the acceleration uh, capabilities for classification and actions. Uh, the adapter can do uh, a classification for L2, L3, L4, uh, encap encapsulation, encap decap, and uh, many more uh, par uh, parsing and more fields by uh, the open flow. Um, and the actions can be marking, steering to, to queues, steering to virtual function, uh, rewriting packets, counters, and so on. Uh, so we have uh, modern NICs. Modern NICs can do those things, so let's use them uh, to accelerate uh, software. What we can do for XDP? Um, so we can use TC to uh, put, uh, to insert the rules into the hardware. Um, and uh, it should work also with uh, legacy NICs that do not have uh, hardware acceleration uh, support. Uh, so two examples that um, we're going to show uh, here. Um, one of them we're going to show uh, is marking. Uh, so you can use already uh, TC to uh, do marking on the SKB with SKB edit. Mark a flow with a certain number, certain tag. And then uh, choose any action for that uh, marking. Um, another example is dropping. Instead of going to the software and dropping in software, you can decide that your specific flow is going to be uh, dropped in hardware. And uh, also, and, and all the statistics of, of those flows will go to the software, to TC. So usually all the performance that the XDP program is, is showing, so you can drop around uh, 20 million packet per second per core. So I think in that case, you can drop 100 million packets per second with, with zero cores, for example. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so the uh, XDP application, that uh, real, real use case that we're going to talk about is Catran. So first of all, what is Catran? You don't supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what is that? Uh, first, uh, the first thing it is, it's a village in Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> okay. Second thing is we need to cut and run with a typo. Uh, yeah. So the third thing is you know just a cat running away with also some weird C instead of K, and it's also a load balancer. Um, L4 load balancer, and what it is, yeah, it, so it holds those, all those things, and it really, it really is, a, a, in our world, uh, L4 lo load balancer software written uh, in XDP, and what it does, um, like a load balancer, like briefly you're gonna, over that, uh, packets coming in from the network, uh, going to the load balancer, being uh, 
parsed. Uh, if it's a new flow, you need to calculate, uh, you need to take, you need to do a hash and create a key for that. And, and then uh, you encapsulate the packet and send it over to the real server that is actually uh, consuming uh, the packet and performing the processing for the application uh, in this path. So we have the cut run, we have the real server, uh, we have services and so on. The links are here. It's open source by uh, Facebook. Um, so uh, what, we, uh, what we did, we took it and we added acceleration for that. So a little deeper on Catron, it has two parts. It has user space part and XDP based uh, packet processing code. Uh, they, these parts have the shared um, shared tables for the um, between the user space and user space and the XDP, where all the keys and virtual IPs are stored. Um, and the action are, as I said, it's you need to do parsing, extract flow ID from the parse. Um, you need to generate a key if it's a new flow, and then you need to look up that key in the virtual in the virtual database where you have the virtual uh, IP. You update the statistics, counters, and so on, and you modify the packet. Uh, do uh, usually here it's IP and IP uh, encapsulation, and you send it to the real server. This is what uh, the Catron does, and what we did is added acceleration uh, using uh, TC. How we did it, packets are arriving from the NIC into the XCP program. XCP program, what it does, uh, it first check if the packet already has a mark. Uh, if it doesn't have a mark, it needs to, like the legacy one, it needs to uh, parse it, need to look the, um, to the look, up, look up the flow ID, um, and if it's, uh, if, if it doesn't exist, then it has it added to the hash. And what we added is actually uh, the part where you sing signal to the user space application to add that flow to the hardware. So you sig we signal it through a perf event to the user space, to the same user space application, user space part of the Catron. And uh, that user space application up update the XDP uh, map and call TC to mark that flow with a certain uh, flow ID. Once this uh, flow, like the same flow is like arriving to the XDP program, it skip this part and just uh, update the statistics, encapsulate and uh, doing the takes uh, for the while. Questions until now? So, so the only thing that you need to change in the in the program is only the go back. Is only the three colored lines. That's the all the, the thing that you need to extend the application. Okay, so a little bit more info about the, uh, the user space application. Um, as we said, it it updates. Uh, it gets the perf event from. Um, from uh, from the XDP application, then create uh, TC uh, using TC filter, SKB edit, mark, and the mark ID here. Um, and from that point on, the hardware is uh, marking it uh, through the uh, yeah, through the through the completion of the hardware, and you get it on the SKB. And you can also see the modified code is here. You can have a look and browse it. You can get the presentation later, I guess. Um, so what we gain from it, right? Performance, this is what we do. Um, so performance results. What we've seen that uh, we, we run it through uh, multiple uh, uh, RxQs. Uh, each RxQ is a different core and uh, it, it, the RxQ and TxQ, of course, uh, the same uh, go to the XDB program and, and Tx on the same uh, core. And what we've seen is that with a small number of flows, we saw between 40 and 50 percent uh, improvement, um, and and it scales up 
as well when you, when you go up with a uh, number of cores. So the green is the metadata accelerated uh, results. This is packet per second. Uh, so the single core was improved from about 3 million to 4.2 million. And uh, it goes up until uh, improvement from 26 to 39, a 40 million packet per second. Uh, this is with uh, 12 cores. Yep. What was the distribution of traffic that between the cores? What was, what was the distribution of traffic that was supposed to be dropped versus traffic that was supposed oh. to be forwarded? So all the packets were marked. We didn't use a drop in this experiment. Everything is going to the software uh, and being accelerated by the marking. So the software doesn't, after the first flow, it doesn't use, uh, it doesn't look up the flow ID and just uh, go to the statistics and transmit the packet. There's a mic over there. Yeah. Sure, this one. Hello. Although uh, you're using the SKB ah, edit uh, action, you're not really editing the SKB, I'm guessing. You're uh, doing it in the data meta for the XDP buffer, so the mark action. So it actually also do the SKB edit. So if you don't have an XDB program, that is what is done today. Yeah, yeah. You will get it in the, SK, in the SKB mark. But now we also extended the XDB program to get it as a metadata. So, uh, so, so the understanding is right. It is not in the SKB, but in the met data meta of XDB. Yeah, XDB is done before the SKB, right. Right. Uh, so the next question is, I mean, when earlier we were talking about this, you know, we had some discussions um, when Dave was around uh, in NetDev about how do we define the format of these hints, which are acceleration hints that we program provide to the XDP program. Uh, in this case, because it's just one hint that you're giving, which is a mark. I mean, it's you know, simple enough, we just put it and use it, but then uh, if we have to do more than that, do you, do you guys have any idea of that? So we use uh, the RFC that uh, Said from Melanox uh, published and it's using uh, a very complicated structure that's actually, it's put, put it in the headroom of the, of the buffer. But again, this is, uh, the complicated data structure is vendor specific. No, it's a generic. It's a generic way to tell the driver, I want the specific feature to be enabled and it will be copied to the, to the headroom. Uh, how does the XDB program parse that information? So it's, it's, it's not accepted upstream and, and upstream wants another solution that is based on the, 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 uh, the PTF uh, type format in, in, instead. So, and Sage is also working on that, but yeah. And I also have an implementation that got rejected upstream like Sage's. <laughs> so it's not can like mine was better. Can we, can we uh, work but. together to figure out what will work? Okay. Yeah, we, we, we have to figure this one out. Right. This is fairly critical for the forward progress of the project. We, we first want, you know, to give the appetite for, for the people to do it. Um, so now's the time I need to renew my normal rant against the NIC vendors. So this supports, what, a handful of protocols, UDP, TCP, Genev. Yes. We, we had the battle to get checksum complete because that works with all protocols. And I'm concerned that we're falling back into that mode where the NICs are only supporting protocols that basically the marketing team at the vendors want to support. So I'm trying to be constructive and, and figure out a way forward and yeah, so, so that last line, inner packet and TCP UDP, this looks like the, the data sheet. No. That, well. One below. We, in Mellanox Nix, we do support a flex parser, so, and we use it today to implement in new protocols. So, for example, we can parse quick, we can parse. Well, well we can so. The parser. So, we if can you can parse parser. anything, that's fine, but there's still the issue. If you go to the TC Flower um, man page, 
it's, it's like three pages long. And if you read it, it supports a very small number of protocols. So somehow we need to get out of this mode that there's only a few protocols. So I think if, if the right way to do this, if the infrastructure allows that flexible parsing, um, someday I do want to be able to download a BPF program to actually do the parsing for me. So I don't want to rely on the vendors. Um, if we can get there, that's a good thing. So BPF, it's not efficient for ASICs, but can we uh, agree on P4? Well, well, so let's not worry about, about the um, P4 versus BPF. No, 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 the, it's, the first it's critical. Level no, is, it's critical. Well, but the first because level is I need programmability of the parser before I need a fixed parser. That's the differentiation that I want to yeah. make. So I don't, I don't care as much about P4 versus BPF because you can always convert um, P4 to BPF or whatever, or maybe vice versa. But so it's I get concerned when I see classification fields and a very small number. And we just had Alyssa talk about protocol classification. We had talks this morning about people want to put OAM and even TCP. I, I, it's, a, it's a mismatch if I have a device that is offering this great functionality, but it's very limited to the protocols it can support. Okay, so, so that's the reason we do have in the hardware. Currently, we're not exposing it as a P4. So in the language of P4, you can, ex you can um, define new structure of protocols. You can extend the pipeline of what is uh, the, the tree of protocols. Can so P4 do give this uh, can I, can I extendability. How, much, how many more slides do you have? Is it, uh, I mean, you can, we can, we one, can continue two. doing this. Huh? Two more. Okay, uh, keep, keep going, Tom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, is it Tom? Okay. There's only about 10 minutes left, so if, if the... Oh, we have 10 minutes left? For this talk, yes. <laughs> um, so I think that's great. If, if you can somehow use P4, um, we're, we're not wedded to BPF in, in that sense. Um, P4 does have an advantage, and the way it describes the, the parse graph is a descriptive language, and that makes a lot of sense. It's something that we do lack in the BPF world. If, if you look at something like flow dissector um, in the kernel or, or BPF, it's a lot of code because it's a functional language. But if you step back and look at what, what protocol parsing really is, you can come up with an abstraction more like P4 that actually makes sense. Uh, okay. So if you could take that abstraction with this interface and give me the, the ability to program, um, I want to do quick classification for some reason, and I don't want to have to go back to the hardware vendor, but if I can do that somehow, in a common programmable language that's right once run anywhere, and I can program it and get this sort of thing, and I can classify quick packets by the connection ID, that is of value to me. Yeah. So Let, let's have the discussion after. Yes, I agree. Um, I see the cat again. And okay, so uh, we're talking about the results. It's all between. 40 and 50 percent uh, improvement for a small number of uh, flows, then we wanted more, right? 100 flows, not really uh, something that happens, it happens more. So we wanted more, we uh, bring up to, brought up to 10K uh, flows, and what we saw there is that on 12 cores, we still got the 50, almost 50, 50 percent uh, gain with acceleration, and what we saw interesting is that with low number of cores, and, and or a single core, it was almost, um, there's, there's no improvement. And uh, when we, so the improvement is increasing as you increase the number of cores. Um, then we thought, okay, what, how, why is that? What we found out is that we thought about it and we were thinking that uh, um, the actual, when you have uh, one core, you have 10K flows, you have uh, cache misses uh, for the, let's say, for the counters. Uh, so you still have cache misses on, on the single core. And so we, we, we thought, why why on 12 cores you don't have it? Um, so I mean, the answer is pretty simple. But uh, on 12 cores, these 10K are dividing between the cores, right? So you get about 1,000 uh, flows per core, and with 1,000, we already got a uh, uh, good improvement uh, in that 40% uh, uh, range. 
Um, so th this is the explanation of why a uh, small number of cores uh, are currently in less uh, efficient, um, but uh, we do have a way to fix that. So what we've learned is really uh, currently with the current implementation, high number of flows uh, will not uh, scale. So what we need to do is actually, instead of marking per flow, we need to mark per destination ID. Uh, destination ID is the real server. So we don't really need to mark uh, per flow basis. We need to mark um, each flow, we need to only to mark its destination. So you're gonna have a uh, small, uh, small uh, a table and, 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 and that, that, will, uh, that should clear the cache miss is issue from the CPU. And another thing that uh, to avoid cache miss for the statistics is also using TC for the uh, statistics in hardware. So instead of updating the, updating the statistics in software, which causes cache miss, um, we get the statistics from the hardware and whenever you want to read it for flow aging uh, and so on, you just query the hardware and get the statistics uh, from that. Um, so once we do that, we expect the performance of multi-core of even one million core, uh, one million flows, one million cores, it's not uh, yet. Not yet. <laughs> there, not yet, uh, not in single server. Uh, so one million flows, we expect it to be the same as 100 flows. Uh, so single core would be four million and 12 cores would be 40 million uh, for one million flow. This is what we expect uh, after these uh, modification. And uh, we'll keep you updated. More questions? room for a question or two. Okay, so one observation. Uh, when, when you have both TC rules and XDP program loaded, uh, and you just specify TC rules without, without like saying whether they should be offloaded or not, like so you don't specify the skip uh, hardware flag mm -hmm. or skip software flag. Yeah. Uh, then, depending on what the rules are and what the hardware is capable of doing, those two things might happen to execute in either order. So if the TC rules are offloaded, they will run before XDP. But if they happen not to be offloaded, because of whatever arbitrary choices were taken by the kernel, XDP program will be run first. So this is really inconsistent. So I wonder whether the correct solution would be like, uh, this allowing of loading of TC when an XDP program is loaded to always preserve the same order. Because mm -hmm. this is highly confusing and I think it's wrong. I think it's a bug in the kernel actually. So I think uh, you, for this example, I think we must use, of course, uh, skip software. Because those packet no, not supposed to come to, to use us not to be create an SKB and not go to TC at all. So uh, what you're proposing is to like have different behavior of the kernel when the skip software flag is specified and not? That doesn't seem correct to me either. It no. should behave really the same. No, so what is will happen if you're asking for skip software? The, so the hardware will do it for you. So when you get a packet and what's classifying the hardware, you will get and it's like if you don't have an XDP program that's doing nothing, you will get a packet with an SKB, with SKB mark with the specific value. The hardware is doing it, of course, by the driver. Let, let, let's take that one outside. Yes, bro, last one. You, you, I thought you, what was what, somebody else wanted to ask a question? I, I have one. Why, why did you like update, why you, you're sending an event via the, the ring buffer, or the perf ring buffer to user space, and then, then you update the map from user space? Why don't you just update the map from the, the fast path? Um, okay, we can think about optimization, but the reason that we're sending an event, because you don't want the user space to scan the map. You want to get an event because you need to do an action for every new yeah, so at mm. th 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 that, that point you're installing the, 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 the TC yeah. stuff, but you could, you could already mark the packets. So 
before, but I guess you don't need, you're actually not interested in marking. Right. Uh, you're interested in the hardware marking. Yeah, because you, you didn't get a specific action to mark it. So if you run here, if you do FTP code want to mark it, of course it can. Or yeah, but I, st I still think, so it's in, you also use it as, as a lookup table. Uh, I think you need to do it in the, in the fast part to update the, the map that, that, that you calculate, the, to, that you figure out what flow ID this is, and then, then you have to look up in that table, and it will be too slow. It will happen too late by getting, you're waiting for the user space to update before you can start processing packets. But it's, it's just a minor detail. And, yeah. and uh, so in any case, you know, if it takes time, or if the hardware is not supporting, the, co the code is still processing packets, even that they are not marked by the hardware. So this yeah. is a legacy, but it's just continue working. Uh, we also have some ideas, you know, uh, maybe not to go to, to user space, maybe to have a helper function that's actually adding a rule. Yeah. So there's many options. We just, you know, uh, I think what is uh, make me, make me uh, do this work, I think if you remember a few uh, NetDevs ago, Everybody said, okay, I'm doing XTP and that's DDoS. And me and Jamal was asking, why, and why are you not using TC to do it a hardware offload for that? And you can show me that it's not dropping in 10, uh, 20 millions per core. So we said, okay, we need to do it by ourselves. Nobody's doing it. Yeah, and, and stuff has also been stalled because we have not standardized the metadata area and, and stuff like that. Someone also brought this up. Yeah, so, so so you're running with, with out of tree patches to make to to, to, to demonstrate demonstrate a point, and I think the performance numbers do show that it it is valuable to skip the, the, the passing of, of the, the packets. If the hardware can assist there, it's actually quite interesting, performance wise. Yes. There's, there 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 are still some caveats on how to hold the setup is, and but it's okay. It's a proof of concept. Okay. Thanks. So. Uh, I think we, we're just going to wrap it here. Baseline came out today. What is that? Zero cores to drop how many packets with zero cores? You said how many? Five million. Who, who came up with that? Ronnie? Yeah. Well, ten million. Ronnie, he said zero cores. Is, is that like a new marketing term or? <laughs> <laughs> Dropping. So all the Nick vendors now are going to say zero cores to drop packets? <laughs> so Anyways. I, I didn't, uh, we, we didn't do the <laughs> exactly test for that, but I know that's we do a OVS offload, <laughs> and with OVS with VXLAN forwarding the packets, yeah. we do 70 million p uh, packet per second with so zero cores. I don't need the CPU anymore, right? Yeah. Okay. To forward the packet to a VM and forward it back to the to the wire. Anyways, so I think thanks. we can handle a hundred. Let's give them a round of applause.